Ni hao. I speak very little Mandarin, I'm afraid, but I'm delighted that my book, Making History, is going to be available in your language. Um, it's about history, and I should begin by saying that history has two meanings. It, in the first, it's the past, what's, what's happened. Um, but it also is the writing about the past, how um, it's produced by other people. And in that sense, the past comes down to us through a filter, is other people's views about the past. And what intrigued me is that the historian, he, he or she, have their own prejudices and their own agendas. Um, and having an agenda isn't necessarily a bad thing. Some of the most interesting and famous works of history are by people who've got a very definite range of prejudices. But what I've done is written from the very earliest days about historians' lives and characters and the particular um, axes they had to grind and shown that that's influenced the way that history has come down to us. And it's a remarkable, a remarkable crew. But just to give you an idea of some of the people who are featured, Herodotus, the earliest of all of them, Thucydides, Julius Caesar, Livy, the Venerable Bede, Froissart, the famous French historian, Machiavelli, Shakespeare, Voltaire, Ban Zhao, the first notable Chinese woman historian, Ken Burns, Mary Beard, Simon Sharma, Tony Morrison, the Chinese historian Gu Zhigang. And on we go. I list not just historians, but because history comes down to us as it does, there are many other sources. Some of the most influential formers of what we take to be the past are certainly not, one, not what one would call professional historians. I've included the composers of the Bible, the historical parts anyway, dramatists like Shakespeare, diarists like Pepys, journalists, and crucially, novelists, from Walter Scott to Guan Zohong, if I pronounce his name correctly, those writers of fiction who show us what life was like from the inside, what the English poet Philip, Philip Sidney said were the effects, the whisperings, the motions of the people. So those are the first two themes, showing how every major historian has had an agenda, conscious or unconscious, and that we get our sense of the past from all kinds of sources, not just the academy, not even just the list I've mentioned, but generals, monks, politicians, or the men and women in the street who put together, say, the Anglo-Saxon chronicles. But there is a third theme, which is how we've come to write history at all. The earliest cultures didn't think about the past in a, in a way that was continuous. Historical consciousness isn't like that. It took thousands of years to have that degree of concentrated inquiry. Even then, how to record it? We've traveled through court lists, chronicles, annals, church-dominated histories. Then the founding of history is an academic discipline, thanks to the German historian, Leopoldo von Ranke, and so on, on to our present age, where we have a new problem, or maybe an old problem in a particularly acute form, the appropriation of history by governments who want the past to be written up in a way that confirms their own hold on power. In mainland China, for instance, in November 2021, Xi Jinping issued a resolution officially reassessing the hundred-year-old history of the Communist Party, in effect rewriting the past and dictating how a new version would appear in published textbooks, especially those going to universities and, and schools, minimizing events like the famine of 1959, which killed between 15 and 55 million, and political purges, which killed 38 million. Statistics. The November speech was the third time in the last 80 years that a Chinese leader has made a major speech to tell his children how history should be written. Mao did it in 1945, Deng in 1981. Quite simply, Xi sees competing narratives as dangerous, his version of dangerous, so there mustn't be any. It's what commentators, rather than naming that lying, are calling performance legitimacy, making sure 
all accounts of the past make his own place in history secure. So that's all in my book, along with over a hundred illustrations, many, as I say, in colour. Well, I enjoyed writing it and hope you will enjoy reading it. On to my final salutation. Sisi. <laughs>